Hey guys, how's it going? I'm here with Mr. Zarnecki, and he's going to give a little intro about himself before we formally start this interview. Hi guys, my name is Mr. Zarnecki. I teach here at Foreign High School in Milford, Connecticut. I am a technology education teacher, and I've been teaching at Foreign for over three years now. So, now you've been teaching for over four years. What did you do before you became a teacher here at Three Foreign? years. Before I became a teacher here at Foreign High School, I was uh, working in Stonington, Connecticut, and I was a technology education teacher there in Stonington. All right, interesting, interesting. Do you have any other uh, past history in technology? I do. I, I used Before I became a teacher, I used to work in special effects and animation, working in industry, I guess if you would call it, doing uh, lots of commercials, Talbots commercials, um, Fisher-Price, Lego, a couple things like that. Have we seen any of your works anywhere? Uh, you might have. I don't know if some of you guys have seen my work, but some of my work has been showcased at Mohegan Sun and, and uh, Foxwoods Casino. Um, with the gift of the little people and it's in packages for the Lego companies for doing the stop motion animation. But my role basically at those, at those facilities were basically to do um, compositing and it's basically rod removal. So it's using what we have, it's called the green screen and I would be the guy who would be removing all the rods that would be supporting an object to make it look like it's floating in space. All right, cool. I saw that in uh, the Millennium Falcon when they did the original episodes of Star Wars. Very much so, yeah. They use a lot of green screening and compositing in there. It's a huge field. It's called post-production, and that's what I was involved with when I was working at Reckless Abandoned Studios in East Granby, Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, no way. All right, cool. So what kind of inspired you to become a teacher? Were you hoping to someone teach that? Exactly. I, I was inspired because I said, you know, I enjoyed teaching, uh, being around young, young people, if you will, and I, I felt it was a need or a calling for me to, uh, to, to get involved with the community and, and the people at large. So I figured, you know, what better way to do it than become a certified teacher? So I said, what area could I do that in? So I found Tech Ed at Central Connecticut State University, and I decided to get certified in it so I can teach my passion to the students so that they, in hopes one day, could take what I've learned in the experience, in the industry, and, and make the industry even grow better and be better as an environment and, uh, and, and strive on that notion that I've taught them some good stuff, you know, like wood shop to, you know, 3D modeling and animation to special effects to lighting and rigging and cameras and stuff like that. Yeah. Definitely. That's all part of the evolution. Um, now, you mentioned certifications. Did you receive any type of certificates in order to teach these different subjects at Foreign? Um, not really uh, certifications, but I've done a lot of outside training. Uh, I've done some stuff. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of certifications that I have. I'm, you know, I'm a dive certified. Uh, I have my diver's license. I have. Uh, I'm an EMT. I'm a certified uh, firefighter level two in the state of Connecticut. Um, I do a lot of other things. I'm in, I'm in the Connecticut Film Guide. I'm an IMDb. I am in um, the Connecticut Film Commission Group, um, a th photography group of Connecticut. So I know a lot of people in industry who are working in Hollywood East Coast. Um, and do a lot of side productions when I'm not involved in school. So there's a lot of things, even though I teach during the daytime, outside of school I'm still doing a lot of other activities that keep me involved in the scenery. That's pretty cool. Wow. So what courses are you teaching at Foreign this year? So this year I'm teaching for 2015-2016. I'm teaching CAD, uh, 3D modeling and animation, App Design 1 and App Design 2. Those are the courses I've been teaching. And uh, there's a lot of new courses that are coming in the future that I look forward to, hopefully, um, with my, my stay here, that to help grow the program and expand it a little bit more so that the students can get more involved with the community as well as uh, develop some really sweet programs and products for themselves. Now, I heard, too, there's another class that they added, um, fairly new, and they're going to kind of reach for uh, AP credit for it. It's called um, Mechatronics, I believe. Yeah, that's actually a continuation of our App Design 3 course. It's so students take uh, uh, our MIT App Inventor uh, basic computer science level uh, one course, usually freshman and sophomore year. Then second, uh, then the next year after you know, sophomore junior year, they'll take app design two. And then as they graduate from that, if they pursue to take a career path in that, and they find more interest, is getting more involved in coding and hands-on, taking the code that they have and implementing it into real-world technology products and electronics that actually function. And it's just called our mechatronics class. You know, it's computers programming and electronics course in the long frame, but in the overall, it's called mechatronics. And it's where students are taking their code, and they're taking the code to actually program a device to actually to to run. You know, using Arduino's and Raspberry Pis is what we're using. 
So what are some of like the products? Like what what is what's the potential of this technology that we're giving to students? Oh my gosh, the potential for this is unbelievable. I mean, just look around you today. The things that we have, the, we have the lights, we have uh, blinkers. When you're on the highway, you can see, um, or even at a stoplight, that the the stop, the red, yellow, and green symbols that are flashing. Our students can understand how those operate, you know, or yeah, when you're on the, even the cameras here too that are working filming us right now. That's right. They have the red, red LEDs on them. Um, the students know how to turn those on, turn them off when a button is pressed. Um, they can program those things. They can program things to tweet when something is done. Um, they can set up sensors. All these, there's so many things. This is the basic entry level things to sort of hacking at uh, projects. It's called like a, a making projects, hacking a project to, to make it viable to suit your needs. So if you want to Maybe have your, you know, have a plant grow or have it being fed water or something like that. Every time somebody tweets a certain hashtag, um, you can set something like that up. And some students have done that in the past. And it's quite interesting to see how their ideas come to fruition uh, by using a little bit of code and a little bit of hardware, combining those two together and making it come to reality. So now in order to teach this stuff, um, have you ever experienced any of this programming and putting together the hardware necessary to do some sort of thing? Do you have any ideas? Uh, to be honest with you, my, I, I'm new at it. I'm very new at this sort of technology. Um, I'm still uh, playing around with it myself with my own Arduino at home and my own Raspberry Pi. And uh, it, I do have some ideas that I want to get involved with, which is more with the, the NFC, which is called Near Field Communication Cards. Which is very popular right now. You're having, you know, your cell phone basically pay for your McDonald's sandwich or whatever. Um, I, I am working on it on my own, trying to figure out little experiments and trying to bring those ideas to the classroom so that students can take those ideas and and branch off of them to make something bigger and better than what I came up with as a simple project for them. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. So it's like with something that's so new, we're all learning together, and that we're all able to build off build off each other. It's, uh... Certainly, yeah. Every little project counts. I mean, even though it's the smallest little thing, making a light blink, that's where it starts. Turning the switch on and off is a big deal because when you add that light switch, the next thing you do, that light switch, when it's on and off, will control maybe a fan. And that fan now controls something else, which controls something else, which controls... Now you have this huge system comprised of lights and switches and lasers and all sorts of things, and now you, you're on TV and now you got all these you know people doing things and you're running your own show and maybe you create your own product and become a you know, a millionaire and retire early just because off of an invention that you created in high school. It can be done. I believe it can be done. It's just, it just takes a little bit of hard work and a couple ideas and, you know, you pitch this like a Shark Tank thing to somebody and I tell you, you do a, a Kickstarter campaign or something like that with an idea, you're going to be set. That's pretty powerful. Just lighting up a simple LED with a simple circuit is literally like the metaphorical one above your head and it can just open up so many opportunities in the future. I never really thought that deep about it, but that's... Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating. So I encourage you guys to get out there and buy yourself a Raspberry Pi. They're not very expensive. It's about $35. And you can start creating and making today. Honestly, guys, give it a shot. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this interview. Uh, I just want to give Mr. Zarnicki a thank you for staying after and uh, doing this interview. And also, I have a cameraman in the background, which you can't see him. But it's been a big help, so just gotta give credit where credit's due. And uh, so yeah, other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.